So we started this project together, this junk journal fabric, start to finish, and I have decided to make it a idea or technique journal where the things that we do, we'll log what they are, put them in the journal, and it will be a great reference point when you're looking for ideas to flip through this journal and determine what you would like to do to decorate your pages. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am hopeful that you will subscribe to my channel while you are here and of course hit that notification bell and you will be notified when additional content is uploaded. So thus far we've put this fabric journal together. It's covered in fabric. We have the book plate on the front with a little cheesecloth. We've bound the signatures in and decorated that spine with some buttons. The buttons hold tightly on that binding thread and I have not glued them down. I have left them free so as the binding might stretch you don't break the thread. So let's just open it up. I have flipped that signature. If you remember I put it in backwards and told you that I would um, flip it or rebind it off camera and I have so my little butterflies up in the upper right. We have the two little pockets on the front cover. The signatures are bound in. We've left the threads free to make a decision on them later. We created this little uh, pocket folder out of an Elizabeth Holden page just by putting that page in half and we created four little pockets here. It's sewn down the center and around the outside edges to secure those pockets into place. And we've tucked that into the little triangular pocket with the thumb hold on the back cover. We'll stick that back into place. And today I think what we will do is just begin to decorate or to put our ideas into this journal. And my thought process is as we work with new techniques, as we develop new ideas, we'll put what they are, kind of give a reference to where you can find them in the channel. And this, of course, is the book that I am giving away as a prize in my Facebook group. So to start, we're just going to cut some uh, four inch by five inch pieces of white cardstock and the cut right wax paper is the brand I'm using, just your basic kitchen wax paper that you can buy at the grocery and I'm cutting it to the same size as the pieces of cards that I've cut. I've cut some white and I've cut some, you know, darker. I'm rolling that up into a ball to get it nice and scrunchy. I'm going to roll it twice and really rub it around in my hands. We have that scrunchy piece of paper. I'm going to tuck inside this embossing folder and take to the Big Shot embossing machine and run that through. Now I did find, because this wax paper is so thin, if you lay an additional piece of cardstock on top of your folder when you run it through, it does emboss better and the result is better. So I'm going to put this piece of wax paper and I actually think that if you sandwich it in between two pieces of cut cardstock you can can get two in one at the same time but for for this particular one I've just put uh, one in but I do sandwich it in future future passes. I have the iron temperature set to high no steam and just running the iron over the top of that. And I'm going kind of slow to, to make sure that that wax is adhering to that cardstock because what we're working on is a wax resist. So let's pull that off and you can lightly see that on your cardstock. Make sure that when you lay it down, you lay it down with that wax side up. And once you finish with the ironing. Take your ink. Let me just come in a little tighter so you can see. And ink over the top of that and that embossing comes out very beautifully as the background for you as you ink the piece.
and it's kind of hard to see in here but there you go now you can see it a little bit better it it just the wax acts as a resist and when you finish if you take just a piece of um paper towel and go over the top of it you you get all that ink off of the wax because the, the ink will not hold on the wax now i'm just putting a, a second color i used peacock feathers and and a um, chartreuse green and now i am doing the second one just in a vintage photo And I'm coming back in with just a plain stays on brown, which is a little darker than the vintage photo, just to give it a little depth. And I think I like the lighter one laying down on, on our gel press sheet. I'm going to run the dye, the butterfly dye, on the tea stained or the vintage photo and make the butterfly out of that vintage photo. And I just have some craft card stock that I'm going to cut in a small enough piece to just kind of write down what this technique is. And I'm just going to, to put, I'm trying to decide if I want the larger butterfly or the smaller one. And I think I've decided on the smaller one. I'm just going to write wax resist on this so I will remember what this technique was and I'm doing this two times I'm doing this once for the folder that or the journal that I'm giving away and then I'm creating one for myself as well so I can go back and remember now I'm just going to ink around this in black because as you remember we have a lot of, of black accent in the fabric and and in our journal signature covers so we'll give both of these just a a little bit of a edge with the black and i'm going to make the little butterfly body i'm just taking a sharpie and just blacking in his little body here And I think that will look nice sitting right there. But I want to add a little cheesecloth behind my my paper or my identification of the technique or what this is. So we'll add that cheesecloth behind. We'll just um, glue that down. And I think I have decided to add a little button. So I have the some of the binding thread scraps that were left laying. So I am taking that embroidery thread. It comes in five or six strands. I'm going to take that, pull those strands apart, and use those to tie through this button to make it um, look like it's been sewed onto the page. And now we'll glue all of that down. Piece cloth first, a little identification tag, the button, and now the butterfly. We'll tear out those threads and rough up that cheese cloth a bit. And now glue that in to our book. And I've taken the black and, and gone around the edge too, but I I think it needs a little more black, so I'm going to get my, my uh, Micron pen and just put a really loose border around that just by drawing it in two lines, kind of like it was stitched. And that completes that, that technique. So you have the wax resist, wax paper resist technique identified in the book. We created the little butterfly out of the wax paper resist result that we had with the vintage photo. And there you have it. 
So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you find this technique easy to use. It makes a great background for anything that you want to do or create. And I hope you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, the playlist for all the ephemera, all the techniques that we're putting into this journal is up above. Bye for now.